So after a few years of hints, Google has quietly released Steam for Chrome OS in alpha. So we've gone hands on to see just how well things run and work out if it's worth it. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. Steam for Chrome OS is exactly what the name implies as it's an official port of the most popular storefront for PC gaming, but for the often underpowered Chromebooks. But if yours does have a bit of grunt, you might have a basic gaming rig at your disposal. Installing Steam for Chrome OS is a bit of a hassle at this moment as you'll need a compatible high-end and modern Chromebook as well as the Chrome OS dev channel, which is subject to stability issues as is. As it stands today, Steam for Chrome OS is not for the average Joe, but it does give us a peek at an exciting future for this more or less cloud-based platform. Once installed, Steam for Chrome OS sits in the app drawer alongside Chrome, system apps, Android apps, and web apps. But when it boots up, it's the same native experience that you'll find on other platforms. Notably, installing Steam didn't actually require us to turn on Linux support in the settings menu, which hints that this might be a little more user-friendly than the existing Linux app integration. After the initial setup is complete, you'll be prompted to just sign into Steam as you would regularly. And from there, you can download games in your existing library or even buy new ones if you wish. There is an obvious limitation here though, with only games that support Linux being installable by default. You can easily install games such as Portal, Stardew Valley and City Skylines, but many other games that we tried, including uh, Risk of Rain 2, Satisfactory Raft, Subnautica and Star Wars Squadrons were not available as they are Windows only at this point in time. Approximately half of my colleague Ben's Steam library was available to play on Chrome OS. If you do have a Windows PC, streaming over your local network is also an option here, but it's even better support for Proton, the compatibility layer that allows Windows games to be supported on Linux, which has been a key point for the Steam Deck. It's also going to be here, which is going to be good for the long term gaming viability and game compatibility with Chrome OS. OK, so you're probably wondering, do PC games actually work on a Chromebook? Well, in short, yes, they do. Even in the alpha state of Steam for Chrome OS that is available today, our team has been able to play games without much friction on devices such as an Acer Chromebook Spin 713, specifically the $699 machine which packs an 11th gen Intel i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM and a display that's set at 2256 by 1504 pixels. Google does recommend running games at 1920 by 1080 resolution during Steam's alpha state or this early process, but most games seem to work just fine running at that native resolution on the Chromebook spin. As for games, Portal was our very first test subject and the game opened up quickly and performed reasonably well. Obviously, the source engine can run on a potato at this point in time, but the graphical quality was as good as it ever has been. Frame rates were steady at around 50 to 60 FPS using its default settings and using keyboard trackpad controls, inputs were pretty comparable to a Windows PC. The only quirk that we noticed was with the menu, where there were some notable graphical glitches, but nothing to truly break the experience too drastically. For those that still own Rocket League on Steam, as this game has since been moved exclusively to the Epic Game Store, you can install it, but it is worth noting that the game also dropped Linux support in 2020, so online matchmaking was actually off the table. Rocket League is a pretty well-optimized game that stresses both the CPU and GPU of whatever machine it actually runs on, so it's a decent benchmark of how games in general will run on a specific device. In the case of running through the Acer Chromebook Spin 713, performance was as good as you could expect for integrated graphics on an Intel Core i5. Running at the native uh, 2256 by 1504 resolution with high quality settings enabled, the frame rate seemed to hover around the 30 to 40 FPS mark, but it wasn't particularly steady. It's perfectly playable to some, but obviously not ideal for everyone. On a couple of occasions, Rocket League did sit on a blank screen for a few minutes, which meant a forced reboot was needed. It appeared though that Chrome OS was working fine, but the Steam or Linux layer seemed to have frozen. This is an alpha after all, so we're going to experience some sort of problems. Another title in the mix was Cities Skylines, and it managed to crash Chrome OS on its first launch and remained unplayable on later attempts with quite a few graphical issues, even with just the loading screen. The world itself never actually managed to load in. It was the only game that we attempted that we just couldn't play. 
Stardew Valley just predictably played without any major issues, though turning off VSync did help get rid of some graphical glitches, which still showed up after, but less frequently. Notably, the 2D game is already available on Chrome OS as a dedicated Android app, but we're sure a ton of people out there would prefer playing the full fat PC version, as it is better optimized for keyboard and mouse input rather than a basic mobile port would be. Uh, Slime Rancher also defaulted to playing with relatively low graphics, but had a steady frame rate and played well throughout our testing period as well. Portal 2 turned out to be the by far the best performing title that we actually managed to get to grips with. The game felt completely buttery smooth with a constant 60 FPS frame rate that was only ever hindered by an attempt to actually record the screen using Chrome OS's built-in tools, and that did mean, mean a slight performance drop. With an Xbox controller paired turning around felt smooth and highly responsive to the point where the Bluetooth controller actually felt better than the trackpad in this game in particular. So that's one to note if you are planning to try this out for yourself. Going beyond native Linux games though, we were able to force Risk of Rain 2 to play through Proton. This game was slow to load up. Once it started, it was set at the 1080p resolution and was able to pull a consistent 40 FPS at least in an early run. One thing that we did notice right away is that battery life, as you'd expect, took a major hit, which of course is no shock to anybody out there. The increased CPU and GPU stress does quickly kick in the fans on devices such as the Spin 713, at least in our testing period as well, we were able to take the machine from around 65% battery all the way to under 20% in barely an hour of playtime. This could be due to the raw power needed to power the games, as you might expect, or just that the software needs a little bit more optimization in either case, it's an expected drain and in line with what you would see on some comparably spec Windows laptops as well during the same sort of gaming period. Existing Chromebooks like the Acer Spin 713 weren't actually designed with local gaming as a priority, so the fact that Steam titles do run as well as they do is genuinely impressive. So you're probably wondering what's the advantage of running Steam natively on a Chromebook? Well, in the short term, it's of minimal benefit really. Being able to natively run Steam though is good in some cases, such as playing without an active internet connection or simple single player experiences that you want or have access to at all times. But really, given the limited power of Chromebooks as they are currently and the limited number of machines that can run Steam for Chrome OS, at least today, it's a utility that is minor and something that streaming services such as Stadia and GeForce Now are actually far better equipped to handle, at least at this point in time. That said, Official support for Steam is something that's going to be hugely important for Chrome OS moving forward. In the United States and even here in the UK, you'd be hard pressed to find many students that have never used or touched a Chromebook and many younger students actually use Chrome OS as their daily platform. Chrome OS is what they've grown up with and it's important, it's especially as they want to keep growing up with specific devices, high-end Chromebooks with dedicated GPUs, access to Steam and the operating system these generations have grown up with could be a big deal for the next wave of PC gamers alongside the growth of cloud gaming with that. As of today, Steam for Chrome OS is in its very, very early stages and this alpha test state works on barely half a dozen machines and does require some slightly advanced software tweaks to run. Even if you do have a compatible machine lying around, it's also something we just necessarily wouldn't recommend that you rush to try and install. Of course, in time, we're hoping the list of support devices will expand and that's probably going to be a given. And we may even see a few dedicated Chrome OS powered gaming machines in future. And that's quite exciting. With all that said, though, that is Steam for Chrome OS in its very early phases, but one to watch. If you do have any questions, drop them down below and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we're able. We may even have a dedicated guide at some point in the future, so stay tuned for that. But be sure to let us know what you think of Chrome OS kind of running Steam games and would you ever buy a gaming focused Chromebook in future? Seems like this could be a new growth market. With all that said though, I hope you enjoyed this look at Steam on the new OS, but well, until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.